my nature, not, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today we'll go bird watching, tomorrow we'll catch toads The next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things And I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case Open and shut No doubt about it I'm a nature nut Beatles I love beetles. I mean, I really love beetles. Welcome back, Nature Nuts, to the hot, steamy, fantastically diverse rainforests of Costa Rica, tropical rainforests. This is the place for beetles, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look for beetles. You know why we're gonna look for beetles? Because there are more species of beetles on this planet than any other sort of living thing. In fact, one out of every four species of things on this planet is a beetle. That's great news if you love beetles. And did I mention I love beetles? I love beetles. You know, if there was such a thing as the World Federation of Bugs, the president would probably be a beetle just by odds alone, and probably from Costa Rica as well, because there are very few places, if any, on Earth with more species of beetles than right here. Oh, I'm excited. Can you tell? Let's go look for some beetles. A beetle is an insect with chewing mouth parts, hardened wing covers, and a resting pupa stage like that of a butterfly. Okay, well now let's talk about the most boring beetles in the rainforest. I'm talking about wood boring beetles here, and I think you'll agree they're not boring at all. Now there are lots of different groups of wood boring beetles, but the two most famous ones are the metallic wood borers and the longhorn beetles. Metallic wood borers, there's one here the size of a mango pit, but most of the wood borers that we've been seeing so far are longhorns. Longhorn beetles are called longhorn beetles because their antennae are very long, very gracefully curved, often longer than the body. Some of them have beautiful, bright color patterns. And I've got right here, one of the most spectacular, one of the most famous longhorn beetles of the rainforest, the harlequin beetle, Acrocinus longimanus. Have a look at this thing, just about nothing on this beetle is normal or plain. Everything is spectacular. Starting with the long antennae on the front of the head. Now this one would have even longer antennae if it was a male, this is a female. She's also got very long front legs. That's in fact what the name longimanus means. Long hand with sharp claws on the end of every leg. And the face, what an incredible face. Look at the face of that critter. The, the jaws are very powerful. They can dig right through wood. In fact, they have to because they grow up inside a log as a larvae, and then they have to chew their way out straight through the wood. Those big black patches on the front here, those are the eyes, and the antenna actually comes out from the center of the eye. The eye wraps around the antenna. Can you imagine seeing the world with an antenna wiggling around in the middle of your eye? Very bizarre, if you ask me. And here, behind the prothorax, there's no other name for this thing, it's the patch behind the head, there's a little file with a rasp, and they make a noise with that, which is you know, supposed to intimidate me and make me let this beetle go, but I know better. I'm an entomologist. What else can I tell you about it? The pattern on the back, just put it down to show you that. The pattern on the wing covers, incredibly beautiful, very geometric, reminiscent of, uh, you know, some kinds of lovely tropical artwork, and Sometimes, if you're lucky, oh yeah, you can see it here. They have little pseudo scorpions. They're not real scorpions. They're scorpions with no sting. Uh, they're related to scorpions, I should say. 
riding around underneath the wing covers. Now, isn't that neat? They're not parasites. They're not uh, doing anything for the beetle. They're just little piggy backers, although there's nothing piggy about the back of this beetle. Anyway, there you go. A rainforest classic, the harlequin beetle. And you know, these beetles also shed light on the ancient philosophical question. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is there to hear it, does it really make a sound? Well, it must, because these beetles find them right away, and that's where they lay their eggs. They either hear them or maybe they make a smell. If a tree falls in the forest, does it smell? The face of a philosopher. OK, I'm going to let it go now. It should fly. If it doesn't, don't worry. It's a beetle. It will remain unharmed. No beetles were harmed in the making of this episode. Be free. So you know, you ask any beetle-loving kid what the average size of a beetle is in the tropics, and they'll tell you, they're huge. There are huge beetles here, but the average beetle, this is going to be a big disappointment for you, it's about the size of this one here. Oh, oh, wait, you see that? You see that little guy? Oh, where's he going? Hold on. Coming around the bend. There. That's the average beetle in the tropics. In fact, it's also the average beetle back home in Canada, about two millimeters long. So what we're really looking for today are giant beetles. Even a ladybug is a giant beetle compared to the average. The smallest beetles are the size of big protozoans, while the largest are larger than mice. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. This is great. This is magnificent. I'm so pleased because that is a pleasing fungus beetle. That's their official name, pleasing fungus beetles. Whoever named that critter, ah, they knew exactly what they were talking about. Pleasing. Well, you know, some people say that beetles are just like living jewelry. Other people say that's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. I mean, jewelry, it's okay. But beetles, beetles are really something. And this is one of the most jewelry-like beetles I can think of. It's a golden tortoise beetle. And hey, look at it. It's golden. I mean, that's really gold. If it's not gold, adjust your set. That is as gold as any gold I've ever seen. Gold is not a very common color in the living world. There are a couple of other golden beetles. Not very many uh, other golden creatures I can think of. You know, a few golden moths with a few golden scales on them. But that's about as gold as they get. Now, I want to tell you a few other things about this beetle because it's living here on this leaf surface on a plant that is often protected by ants. So the beetle itself, if it wants to eat the leaf, it has to be protected from the ants that are protecting the plants. And in order to do that, it has very sticky adhesive feet. And you can see that its feet are so sticky that it's having trouble walking, like it has to peel them off every time it takes a step. And then you'll notice that both the wing covers on the back and the pronotum, there's no other word for it, it's the shield behind the head. They're very um, broad and flat. They form a sphere, a disc, uh, that's, which is sort of why they're called tortoise beetles, because that is a shell into which they can tuck their legs and their antennae and their head, and they can grab on with their super sticky feet and go <clears throat> right onto the surface of the leaf. The ants can't get in around the edges, and the tortoise beetle is completely protected like a little living suction cup. Living suction cup and a jewel. What more could you want out of life as a beetle? Gold-colored tortoise beetles can also be found in many parts of Canada and the United States on wild morning glories. Well, I used to think I had a big nose. I was a little self-conscious about it. You should see my granddad's nose. Oof. I don't feel so bad now because now I've seen the bearded weevil. Now get a load of this bug. This is a weevil, so it's got a long schnoot with the jaws on the end of the schnoot. But look at that thing. It's like a big fuzzy canoe paddle. And you know what this guy does? This is a guy, this is a male bearded weevil. He uses that big schnoot to fight with other bearded weevils. Defends his own little chunk of bamboo and 
whaps them off the bamboo with his schnoot while levering them with uh, those long legs with sharp claws on them. It's kind of cool. It's the same general uh, idea as your harlequin beetle, but he's got an extra special cool weapon, the bearded weevil. Pfft, too wacky. Okay, have some bamboo, buddy. What a perfect day for a walk in the rainforest, alone with my thoughts about beetles and tropical biology. Oh, my goodness. Wouldn't it be nice to have a thought today so profound that one becomes instantly famous? Like G. Evelyn Hutchinson, who once simply said, why are there so many species of living things on this planet? Why 400,000 species of beetles instead of simply one? He didn't have to answer the question, mind you, but he became famous just like that. And then the fellow who said, oh, you know, by a study of the creation, one can see that God has an inordinate fondness for beetles. Pah! Try proving that to the Academy. And my good colleague who looked up into one large tree in Panama counted all the insects and said, oh, there are really 30 million species on this planet, not simply two. He didn't have to count all 30 million, but he became famous as well. <laughs> so perhaps what I could do is roll them all together to form one spectacular question. I could say, my good colleagues, why do you suppose there are so many inordinately many millions of species of beetles on this planet? at this present time. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Uh, it's really nothing. Uh, no. Oh, that's simply the sound of raindrops. I mistook it for applause. To name a new beetle, a scientist has to publish a detailed description in an official journal. Hey, hey, that's a sunburner. That's a sunburner. Ah, my friend Terry back home, he's going to be real jealous. Took him 20 years of trips to the tropics to see a sunburner. Excellent. Anyway, let me show you some other stuff. How about leaf beetles? Tremendous numbers of leaf beetles here. I'll just pop this one over there. This I like this one. This is about the biggest leaf beetle I've ever seen. Looks like it's wearing a Charlie Brown sweater. There are uh, more kinds of leaf beetles here than just about anywhere else in the known universe. And the reason is pretty obvious is because there are so many different kinds of leaves. A tremendous variety of plants gives you a tremendous variety of plant feeding beetles. Here's another one. You'd think it was a ladybug, but I'm pretty sure it's not a ladybug, a leaf beetle. They're beautiful, they are diverse, they are what makes the tropics such a wonderfully beetly place. And you know what Ruth Rodriguez, our uh, Costa Rican naturalist guide, says about beetles? Take it away, Ruth. Millions and millions <laughs> and millions of beetles. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy a world full of millions of monkeys. 
Gargantuan in the school, normal and freak. Gargantuan in the school, normal and freak. Ha ha ha! Why not millions and millions and millions of scorpions, all so uniquely unique? Forget it. I'd much rather stick with the Beatles. Gargantuan minuscule, normal and freak. Gargantuan minuscule, normal and freak. Ha! Millions and millions and millions of Beatles. And then a few more just in case. Why are there so many millions and millions of Beatles? Why not some other critter in their place? Millions and 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 millions Well, will you look at that? This is a big day for me because that is the first venomous snake I have ever seen in the tropics. And I've spent, you know, a fair amount of time in the tropics, here and in Ecuador and in Trinidad. And that little thing is a hog-nosed viper. Now, it's a venomous snake. It's a small one. This is not a fully grown one. They get to be half a meter long, if you can imagine that. And even though it's small, it would still have quite uh, potent venom in its fangs up at the front of its jaw, you know, fangs, that kind of thing. So we don't want to get bitten. It probably wouldn't kill me, but it would not, uh, you know, I wouldn't be working on this show tomorrow. Let's just put it that way. It's also uh, commonly known as the jumping viper because when it strikes, it sometimes straightens its body entirely. It doesn't actually jump. It just kind of looks like it jumps. I didn't find it myself. Another fellow found it. I don't know if I would have spotted it. It's so perfectly camouflaged. It's no wonder you can get bitten by a snake by accident. It's a good thing when you see a venomous snake, bad thing when you get bit. That's why I wear these uh, fine looking jungle boots. Oh, and by the way, you know the difference between venomous and poisonous? Snakes are venomous. They inject venom with their fangs. Beetles with bad compounds in their body, they are poisonous, they are bad if you eat them. There are no poisonous snakes, um, but then, you know, who knows? I don't know if people have eaten every kind of snake that there is. But for the most part, you can eat snakes. They're not poisonous, they are venomous. The ones that are venomous. There are those that are not venomous that are also not poisonous. I'm straight on that now, I hope you are. Okay, well, I'm a little bit nervous here right now because this is apparently the very spot where a frog researcher was bitten by a great big fair de lance last year. Tropical viper, not a pleasant thing. You gotta be careful around these buttress rooted trees. Buttress rooted is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we're uh, risking life and limb once more here to show you some interesting stuff about fireflies. And did you know that fireflies are actually a kind of a beetle? They're not flies and they're not on fire. They're beetles and you can tell they're beetles just have a look at them and you can see the wing covers meet in a nice straight line right down the middle of the back. That's a beetle. If you turn this little guy over, you can see the tip of the abdomen. I'll just bug it a bit here. Yeah, there, see that? It blinks. There are specialized cells in which a chemical reaction occurs that gives off light. That's very wonderful. And uh, that's how fireflies communicate. That's how they find mates at night. Uh, by blinking. I bet you knew that, but I bet you didn't know they were beetles. Then, let's have a look at the head of this critter. You see the uh, very large dark eyes on the, uh, on the head. They need big eyes because they're looking for each other's signals in the dark. That's, you know, pretty logical thing. And one more thing before I let this guy go. If you look between the legs in the middle of the chest, you can see a big droplet of fluid that this beetle is giving off as I handle it. That's undoubtedly some kind of really horrible fluid 
that you wouldn't want to get in your mouth if you're some kind of beetle-eating critter. And for that reason, I'll just put it back here for a sec. For that reason, there are lots of other things that look like fireflies, like this guy right here. And this is not a firefly. You can see it's got more or less the same color pattern on the top. And if you turn it over, it even has a fake light bulb on the tip of the abdomen. But this is a forest dwelling cockroach. It's not a pesky cockroach. It never goes in buildings. It lives out in the forest. It smells like a cockroach. That's the defensive thing they do. But it's trying to look like a firefly. It doesn't fool us because we can see that the wings are uh, very uh, soft and they overlap. They don't meet in a straight line down the middle of the back. Not a beetle, a mimicking cockroach. So if you want to know which one is which, there is a simple test. It's just like a light bulb. Take a firefly, hold it above your head, and you should have an idea. Try the cockroach. Just sort of an empty-minded sensation. Give that a try if nothing else works for you. Fireflies give off a cool light so we can assume that their abdomens do not become uncomfortable when they blink. Yeah, I figure it's time to tip our hat to these beetles. It's gonna be here for a while. And leave the rainforest behind. It's kind of a shame. A lot of beetles here. My kind of place. But then, hey, I'm a nature nut. Oh, there's a nice one. Hope you are too. See you again soon. You might just help me out with this at home. I got a few beetles to go. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut. <laughs>